Freelance investigation, surveillance, all night stakeouts. My life is a bit complicated. It's just not for the reasons you might think. Is this like wish fulfillment from a workaholic? That you have a private eye who who can go to sleep and someone who looks exactly like him takes over. Right. So this one person gets to work 24 hours a day. Right. It sounds I don't, like something you would like. I'm, I'm actually wondering if this is a service that can be offered. It came out of um, my comics writing. Like I was doing like the New 52, I was on Nightwing and Deathstroke and then something at Marvel. And I was still figuring out how to write on a monthly deadline to begin with. And all of a sudden I was doing like four at once. And I remember sitting there at like 2 a.m just wishing and dreaming of going to sleep and waking up and having the script done. It's not a traditionally easy story that you have chosen. You know what I mean? And in many ways, that's the, the thrill of it for me. I don't, I don't know about for you, but like, that it has now so many options for music. This wouldn't work with just kind of film noir music or psychological thriller music. It, it, it took a lot of reevaluating for me. Yeah. It's always fun, especially in a short film, if you're going, you know, I'm going to be ambitious with this, I'm going to push the envelope. And I think that, for me, was a case of, where you ask about the genre, it was like, I'm not sure what genre this falls into, apart from maybe noir. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is that it is attempting something very different in a very short space of time. And that was, that was very much what attracted me at that point. Yeah. I was wondering if the experience of making this movie, if you have any insight into why more people don't do it, it's really hard to make anything and to finish anything, but to make anything that looks good and has production value and has performances, it takes a lot. But if you can do it, I think what you gain from it far surpasses um, the obstacles in putting something together. This project really came out of me wanting to direct again. It had been a couple years. I had made this big superhero noir uh, called The League. That's actually how we met. I remember how we met. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. That's a good story. All right, so frequently when I walk around Comic-Con, people are like, oh, Bear McCreary, can I get a picture? So this guy's like, oh, are you Bear McCreary? Oh my, God. oh, here, I made this movie. And it's like, grabs my hand, it's like. Yeah, I like to think I was a little more elegant than that. I Maybe completely not. believe you did that. Slightly <laughs> more elegant, but definitely no, no more subtle. I remember, you know I, mean? I remember like, this differently. It, okay. okay, anyway, whatever. But I think what this says, and this actually bizarrely answers your question about how things like this get done. I think this is something both of you have in spades and something that, from my perspective, is something that I feel hampers me sometimes, is that I am not so good at that putting myself forward mm -hmm. and saying, I've done this, I'm proud of it, you should watch it. There are so many reasons to not get it done, and what gets it done is being a grifter and having the work ethic. And what I think you both have in space, but you here, Carl, because this is what we're talking about, is you were able to say, I am going, like, I'm going to swing for the fences and I'm gonna push. And I think that's how you get these things finished. That's how you get them done, is by wanting to enough. I really think it's the people that you surround yourself with as well, you know? And having those relationships where you feel safe, where you can show Tom an early cut where maybe I haven't figured out all the things and, and get his feedback on certain performance beats. And I remember you, you, you texted me at like midnight at one point, you're like, like this, like this, lose that line, don't need it, I'm not very good on it. And it's gone, and no one will ever know. What struck me about you making this, you, you got this early success as a writer in comic books in a field that many people aspire to get into. And I, I always admired that you excelled at that and you loved it and you made it your life, but you never lost sight of the other things in life that you wanted to do. So it said a lot to me when you said, I'm gonna make a short film again, I knew how serious you were about it because not only did you have this other career going, like doing this does nothing but take away time from your other career and... and yeah. The one that pays you. The one that, exactly. I've always looked at that other career though as something I'm incredibly passionate about, but something that has taught me a lot and made me a better filmmaker. I look at it as like, basically going, you know, what's the old jazz term, like going to the shed mm. um, for, for a year and just working on, yeah. working on riffs and working on your scales and things like that. And then you come back on the scene. You're, I look at comics like that for me. Like I love the medium. And it's also influenced me the way that I shoot now. I definitely take a, a more kind of precision-based approach to you know, my composition, my, my, the way I move the camera, lighting, things like that. Um, and that comes out of, I think, working with incredible illustrators and storytellers for the last 
six, seven years. So yeah. for me, during that time, it was always about keeping the eye on the prize, but also understanding and, and accepting that like things take as long as they take. And if this is what I'm doing now, how do I get the most out of it creatively? What was the you know motivating factor for you here? I just decided that I was going to take a shot and, and build this thing out and do it the right way. And whether anything comes from it, I don't know. But I'm really proud of the product. I'm really proud of what we made. And putting it out there like this is part of that process. Thank you guys both for coming and doing this today. And uh, until the next one, the next longer one. Thanks for letting us be a part of it. Thanks, man. You know, it's not going to be like this forever. You keep saying that. Like you're going to wake up one, one night and, and find out that everything's different and that you're free. And I think you have to make a choice. You don't know what you're asking. We're not sharing a life. I'm just living half of his.